In this environment where the price of oil has been slammed, even as it rebounded dramatically today after plunging at one point down to a six-year low of 42 bucks, what are we supposed to do with the pipeline-focused master limited partnerships that have one time been among the strongest markets performers? Take Magellan Midstream Partners, MMP, a stock that spiked almost $3 today when oil made its big intraday rebound. Magellan has the longest refined product pipeline in the, in the industry, where it transports things like gasoline and diesel, along with a storage business with enough capacity for more than 95 million barrels of crude. Roughly 85% of Magellan's business is fee-based, independent only on volume, not the price of the commodities it transports. Oh, the stock supports a bountiful 3.6% yield. At the same time, it's got a strong balance sheet, so important. Lots of projects in the works to expand the business, including the build-out of a new 800 to 850 million Bar, uh, do, million dollar pipeline from a key Colorado shale plant to storage facilities in the jam-packed Cushing area. So let's take a closer look with Michael Mears, the chairman and CEO of Magellan Midstream Partners. Hear more about how his company's doing and where it is headed. Mr. Mears, welcome back to Mad Money. All right, sir, now I've got to tell you, I was so glad when you come on the show, but I'll tell you why, because Magellan Midstream Partners has made a lot of money for our viewers, and you have been the most level-headed of all the people that have come on about oil. So I'm going to ask you straight, a master limited partnership that is fee based but still depends on the transport of new of projects that are currently existing plus new ones. Can that exist at forty five dollar a barrel oil? Absolutely, it can exist. I mean, first of all, when you look at crude oil, I mean, the market needs crude oil, and we transport crude oil. Partnerships transport it. Magellan transports it. The market needs the product, so it's going to move. It's just a matter of uh, how much moves and whether you have commitments from parties that are credit worthy that can support the movements through your pipe. Well, then let's talk about this new one, Niobrara. I saw today Anna Darko came in. You have so many people who seem to want to be in this that it seems antithetical to the buzz that I hear about the oil market in America. Well, this, you know, with regards to our Saddlehorn project, mm -hmm. which is our pipeline out of right. Niobrara down to Cushing, uh, we do have partners now. We have Plains in, uh, in Anadarka, we just announced today, has joined the partnership. Uh, we're very happy with those partners. They both bring things to the table to make this a very solid partnership. But I think that just ex uh, sets the example that we're investing for the long term. It's not really what the price of crude oil is today. Uh, when we build a pipeline, the issue is, and the question is, what's the price of crude oil for the next 20 years? Right. It's not going to be 40 or $45. It's going to be at a price that's going to support growth in drilling, and we're building infrastructure for that today. So this is an unnatural price, you believe, in terms of worldwide demand and U.S. demand? Absolutely. I mean, this is, oil's always been a cyclical business. Right. Uh, the, the world market's not balanced at $45 crude. It's going to drop off. The drilling's starting to drop off. Production yeah. hasn't dropped off yet. It lags the drilling, but right. it, it will if the price is, stays at this level for some time. But it can't stay there for long because with that drop off in production, you'll soon reach a point where supply doesn't meet demand and it will cycle back again. Okay, so, but let's take the case uh, the other day of a, of U, a, a Uinta and a, a project that was canceled by Newfield. Here's a place, 100,000 barrels a day coming out of Utah. Would have been a natural with another 100,000 for Magellan Midstream Partners to build a pipeline, say. But now they're canceling projects. That means a pro that to me means a pipeline that will never get built, which means that perhaps, or, or will be on hold, will keep you from raising your distribution because you've been a serial raiser of your distribution. You need that growth. Well, growth is important, and okay. uh, there's no doubt about it. But we've got a lot of projects. So you've taken one example there where they're probably challenged, but that's right. just a small example. I mean, if you look at the global picture for, well, the domestic picture, mm -hmm. you've got a lot of opportunities still. The demand for storage uh, is growing. And we know from in, Cushing you need storage. Absolutely. Right? So uh, there's strength in that market. There's strength in facilities on the coast and marine facilities. That's probably a prime area for us for growth right now is marine facilities, storage, and dock capacity. So you can look at the individual cases and say maybe that area is challenged. But the, for the, the entire domestic picture, the growth has not gone to zero. Okay, but what would happen if you weren't a fee-based business? Let's say you were 50-50. Would you want to invest in a company that's 50-50 right now? I wouldn't be opposed to it. I mean, okay. like, again, like I said again, I mean, the price Word. of crude oil is cyclical. Right. It's not going to stay at $45 forever. I mean, obviously, if the more commodity exposure you have, the more issue is when you time it to get in. Okay, but it's timing. That's the So, no, just to put, I don't want to put words in your mouth, but next year at this time, you don't think it's going to be as low as 40 Absolutely not. 
it has to go higher because of worldwide demand or U.S. demand or a better it's way a to It's a combination. Be able to... It's, well, okay. it's a combination of, of growth and demand and also the reaction you're going to get from the low prices today, which is going to bring supply back in balance with demand, which will drive the price back up. Well, look, I, I'm with you. I don't know how fast. I think it's a U, not a V, but I think you know your business better than I do. That's Michael Mears. He's the chairman and CEO of Magellan Midstream, which I regard as the most successful during this period, with the possible exception of Enterprise and maybe Kinder Morgan, but they're really in the same group except for KMI is a C-Corp, not a partnership. May have money is back in the break. Booyah! Jim Cramer here from May have Money. Thanks for watching CNBC on YouTube. Click here to subscribe and get the jump on my exclusives with CEOs, plus market news, investing advice, and a whole lot more.